Hello everyone, Stéphane Couture from Evident uh, Quebec. I'm joined today by Tammy Bourjala. Hi Stéphane. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, we're here to discuss MXU 513, OmniPC 513. What's new in those uh, versions? What are the uh, exciting new features that uh, we're bringing to the table? Uh, the first one, the Merge B-Scan. What is a Merge B-Scan? Uh, basically, when you look at a sectoral scan, we have our minimum angle, our maximum angle. And if you want to scroll uh, or, or screen an entire B-Scan, you have to scroll from min angle to max angle. Well, the Merge B-Scan take all of these angles and put it in a single axis for a quick screening, quick visualization. Make mm -hmm. sense? Absolutely. So it's a new functionality that we are introducing. Uh, this was not done before, and it's a new uncorrected display that is very useful for screening. It does not replace the analysis process, but it can mm -hmm. definitely help it, and it helps to spot the indications into a single view, which is very useful, again, at the screening portion when doing weld inspection. To illustrate that, uh, we have this, uh, this, this data that was acquired on an OmniScan. So we have our A scan, our S scan, like we see traditionally coming out of the wizard. And if we uh, turn it to an ABS layout, well, we have the scanner movement. And as mentioned, we have only the display of one angle or one focal law. So although we see multiple defects or indications coming up in the A scan and, and S scan, actually, uh, we only see one at a time we still have to scroll from max angle to min angle up and down to see those three defects or indications. Uh, we have a new layout, the BSA layout, that takes better advantage of the screen, uh, but it's still the same deal. Now, uh, the Merge B scan, what it brings to the table is uh, removing that need to scroll from up and down, and you can activate it directly from the B scan with a right click, with a tap and hold, and if I scan again, now we have the geometry line, we have indication number one, number two, and number three. Very clearly, uh, it's a fast screening. You can see where it starts, where it ends. So indication number one, number two, and finally indication number uh, three, right there and uh, at your fingertips. When the time comes to save the acquisition or the data file, you type in your name in the uh, manager. But as you can see, we have now have the ability to save directly on a USB key, an SD card, or whatever uh, USB media you might want to be using. Uh, that Merge B scan works on the OmniScan. It works on OmniPC as well. So if I open the software, Here's a more legitimate inspection, not just a demonstration coupon. Uh, we have plenty of uh, root noise, cap noise, and the indications, we can kind of see it, but it, it, we have to do some work. And th this view has the merge be active, correct? Correct, correct. I can turn it off, turn it back on. So we have the merge B scan, correct. Uh, what we can do to clean up the signal is go into display. And under Merge B-Scan, you'll see we have first beam and last beam. So what that does is basically exclude from the Merge B-Scan display some unwanted noise, correct? Correct, yeah. You can, on purpose, eliminate high and low angles from your Merge view. So just to show you the impact, if I go from the minimum angle, 40 degrees, and start scrolling up, we see the Merge B-Scan improving, eliminating some of that noise, some of those unwanted uh, echoes. We can do the same with the last beam, going from 70 to uh, roughly 60 degrees. And we're left with our geometry line and all of the indications. Very clear, very easy to understand. Uh, and if I go back to the main screen, activate the multiple display, we now have two Merge B-Scans left with only the indications. So one, two, three, maybe four, five, and six. Very, very easy to see, very easy to understand. So that works with the linear probes, like we see here, but that works as well with the 
dual matrix and dual linear array probes. So a typical configuration, we go from root to cap in a single scan using longitudinal waves. Uh, there's a, quite a bit of noise coming from the background, uh, not from the background, from the uh, ID, whether it's rough surface or cladding. With the merge B scan, we can eliminate that. And by cutting off the first few angles, going from 30, moving up and up. So we still have all of our indications, all of our defects without them being overshadowed by the, uh, the, the, the geometry, basically. So one, two, three, and four. Very easy. And those tools available in OmniPC as well as in the OmniScan directly. Thanks, Stefan. Very good. So now you can use this display to, dis to uh, visualize all flaws into a single view, and you can easily use that display to spot anything suspect. Uh, anything that's suspect that stands out from the geometry or in this case the back wall line. So we didn't stop there, we added more functionalities in MHU. Now we're pleased to announce that we are uh, supporting projection focusing for linear probes into curved uh, configuration. So the uh, standard uh, acronym COD, uh, circumferential OD, or for, for curved parts and wedges. Uh, we now support a projection focusing on board with these probes, mm. uh, with linear probes. Uh, so I have an example where I have the, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the projection focusing adjusted uh, 10 millimeters in front of the probe right at the center line. So again, projection focusing is the ability to project the focusing plane in front of the probe. Now I can adjust that distance and I'm going to reduce it for this example to the minimum which is right there at in front of the probe or rather the wedge. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the parameter for the angle. So I'm giving this projection focusing an angle that is actually the same as the well bevel. So that is a very powerful tool you can use to focus anywhere and, and, and anyhow really <laughs> as, as you desire to focus either at the center line, at the lower bevel, or at the higher bevel. And this is great to achieve a very good imaging. Let's say you want to have a good crack sizing. You want, you're trying to estimate the height of a crack. You want to have the best definition possible. Well, this coupon here has actually a crack that was developed during service. So right now, because I'm focused at the bevel of the, of the weld, this and this track happens to be a has track slash uh, a bit of a toe track. So we can see very clear definition mm. thanks to projection focusing. So that really enhances uh, the, the definition of that crack now that we know where it's located. Exactly. You also have unfocused option for, for searching also supported with COD. So on top of that, we added support for COD and dual probes that covers dual linear probes, dual matrix arrays. This data file that I'm showing it was actually acquired uh, with the entire configuration done from the instrument. Mm -hmm. And that includes projection focusing support, unfocused uh, half path uh, and uh, true depth uh, focusing options. So now you don't need to import focal laws into the instrument to support these configurations, you can design them on board the instrument. An interesting feature, this one is not new in MH2 5.13, that's a feature we introduced a, a few revisions ago, is the ability to have the, uh, the overlay, uh, the weld overlay that is actually fit to the, uh, the sectorial scan. Uh, so in this example, we can see the curved legs, the curved weld overlay that is adapted to the uh, curvature. So that makes it easier to understand what's happening in this mm -hmm. sectorial scan because of the curvature, so which otherwise would be a little bit more complex to, right. uh, to analyze. What's happening, where the flaws mm -hmm. are located and all that stuff. So to summarize, we have support of linear, dual matrix, dual linear probes in the instrument for flat, AOD, as well as COD. Correct. So no more law file import, 
the more third-party software, everything can be done directly in the instrument, including all of those focusing options, true depth, sound path, uh, focusing, uh, unfocused, all that stuff. That's awesome. Um, now, you might be wondering, what's that? Uh, we have recently launched the new Hydroform scanner. Uh, some of you might have seen it on social media, Oop, right here. Uh, we have the scan deck module, we have the uh, first encoder wheel, we have added a, sanker, a second encoder wheel. Plenty of features, it, it is packed with possibilities. Uh, we have a lot of marketing material dedicated to that scanner. Uh, you can review uh, the, the videos, the documentation, everything is in there. Um, what we did with 513 is including that scanner into the, the instrument. Uh, what I mean by that is on board, we now have, and since the release of the X3, I believe we have the ability to select the scanner we're using directly from a database. So you can see Hydroform 2, it is added to the database, so that will uh, pre-populate parameters for the scan axis, for the index axis. And as I mentioned, depending on the operation mode uh, that, that you want to use the hydroform with, you can do uh, one-line scans with clickers, you can do uh, guided clicker lines, you can do freehand scanning, that, that can get confusing over time. Uh, so in the third tab, that is uh, the scan deck tab, you'll find a cheat sheet for those different operation modes. Mm. Uh, so no need to, uh, to learn everything by heart. You can refer to, to this uh, quick guide if you're ever in a needy situation. So I can't forget my manual to the job site and look at that. Exactly. And remember how to configure the new hydroform. Exactly. So that sums it up for today. Uh, thanks again, Tommy, for joining. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, everyone. And if you have any questions, if you'd like to know more, uh, feel free to reach out to your local sales representative or, or us directly. We'll be happy to help. Um, thanks again for joining, and see you next time. <laughs>